especially in an ASMR style, then please click off of this video. There's other ones out there that you can watch. I'm not trying to upset anyone or offend anybody. It's not my goal at all. Um, and also, I just wanted to say that I appreciate all of the kind words from everyone who subscribed and watched my videos. And if you would like to subscribe, I would really appreciate that and that would be amazing. So, I'm just going to hop right into this case and yeah. Danielle Imbo was born Danielle Octobri on August 7th, 1970 in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to parents John and Feliz Octobri. Her father was actually a kind of like a local celebrity. He was a singer and he went by the stage name Johnny October and he was in a group called the Four Dates in the 1950s which is how he kind of got to popular, got popular in the area. So Danielle grew up loving music and it was a huge part of her life because of her father and she actually was in a local cover band called the School Boys in Philadelphia. She had a really amazing voice that was often compared to Janis Joplin, so kind of like a raspy voice. And she was really good. So she would perform with this band in local venues in her free time, and she also worked as a loan processor at the time, and she worked from home. So, she was also a mother to an 18th, 18 month old son named Joe Jr. And um, she was married to a man named Joe Imbo at one point in time um, before this case takes place. So, now moving on to Richard Patrone. He was born on August 29th. 1969 in Philadelphia to parents Richard and Margaret. Like Danielle, he loved music, especially rock, so they bonded over this later on. And um, he also loved watching sports, especially the Chicago Bears, and he worked at his family's bakery called Viking Pastries, and he loved his job. He was also a father. Um, he had a child named Angela, who was 14 years old, and apparently he was like the main caretaker of Angela, so I don't know if the mother was involved in Angela's life at all, but he took care of Angela. In the year 2004, Joe Imbo had plans to attend the Super Bowl in Houston, Texas, and he decided to go ahead and follow through with his plans, even though Danielle, his wife at the time, was home sick with their child. He was like, sorry that you're sick, babe. I gotta go. And, um, once he got back home, he told Danielle that he met another woman on the plane ride down to Houston, and he was in love with her, and he wanted to get a divorce. So, obviously, Danielle was shook about that, and she was like, um, okay, but apparently they had had some issues before this, um, they were fighting a lot, and they, he also didn't like that Danielle was in a band, and that she kind of had, like, this other life outside of the household, so, um, you know, those were both causes for the divorce as well, but that was, like, the thing that he said was the reason for him wanting a divorce, so he just gets home and he's like, goodbye. So, obviously, not a really great guy. Um, and during this time, during the time after he told her he wanted a divorce, Danielle kind of went into a spiral. Obviously, she became very stressed and she had to learn how to navigate being a single mother it was just a really hectic time in her life, which makes sense. Um, and then during the finalization process of the divorce, she began dating Richard Patrone, and they had actually known each other for a long time because they essentially grew up together, and Danielle was really good friends with Christine, Richard's sister. And they were dating on and off while Danielle was going through this divorce. And according 
was something new for him because he hadn't really shown a lot of interest in dating in the past. And so he just really, really liked her. But unfortunately, Danielle was kind of overwhelmed and she just decided that she wanted some space and she just wanted to try to focus on her son and getting her life together. And she was also feeling a little bit overwhelmed and conflicted about the relationship with Joe because he was trying to get her back now at um, a point after, during this whole process. Joe's like, oh, that relationship that I told you about with that random woman from the plane, it didn't work out. Big shocker, right? And he wanted Danielle back, of course, and she was like, no, I don't want anything to do with you, basically. So she decided to follow through with the divorce, and apparently he would have explosive outbursts over the fact that she didn't want to get back with him. And um, once things were starting to look up for Danielle and the divorce was finalized, she began wanting to have fun again and get back into the swing of her life. So about a month or so after they had taken their break, um, Richard and Danielle took their break. On February 19th, 2005, Richard called his sister, Christine, and asked if she wanted to go to the bar to see some live music with him. And at the time that he called, Christine was with Danielle. And Christine said that she didn't really want to go because she had to work the next morning. But Danielle was like, you know what, I'm going to go. So she decides to go with him. And Richard comes to pick her up in his truck. And I will talk more about his truck later on because it's important. And um, they go to a bar called Abilene's on Philadelphia's South Street. And they met up with friends um, and it was a couple named Anthony and Michelle. And according to everyone that saw them that night, especially the couple that they were with, um, Danielle and Richard seemed like really, really great. Nothing was weird. They were kind of all over each other. They were kissing. It seemed like they were kind of rekindling things in their relationship. And um, they also were apparently discussing their upcoming week and what they had going on kind of comparing schedules as if they were planning another date. Anthony and Michelle asked a couple if they wanted to go to another bar, but they declined because they both had things going on the next day, and notably, Danielle had a hair appointment the next day at 11 a.m. with Christine, her friend, and Richard's sister. So at around 11.45 p.m., they were getting ready to leave the bar, and Richard planned on dropping off Danielle at home in at her home in Mount Laurel before returning to his home in South Philly. And this is the last time that the couple would ever be seen. Um so sorry, I'm reading my notes from my computer. Um the next morning, Danielle missed her appointment with Christine and tried to get into contact with her and Richard, but the calls went to voicemail, and um, the families became more concerned, and Danielle's brother, John, decided to go check on her because he had a spare key to her house, so he gets inside the house, and nothing is out of place. It's completely normal, and um, he, John, her brother, also knew that Joe Jr., Danielle's son was supposed to be dropped off by Joe Imbo, um, her ex-husband, that day, and she, like, would not miss this at all. Like, she cared so much for her son, and she had never been late for anything involving her son before, so, um, when Joe arrived to drop off Joe Jr., uh, Danielle's family was there, I guess, but she wasn't, you know, at this point. Um, it's th past 3 p.m. and she's still nowhere to be found and they're still not answering calls. So, um, the families of Richard and Daniel were close, like I said, so it seems like they had kind of gotten into contact with each other and realized that they were both missing. So, they kept their hopes up, but they became increasingly concerned and they called the police eventually to report them as missing. And... Apparently, I've heard mixed responses after doing my research on this case, but I'm pretty sure that the cops did that stupid thing where they told them they had to wait 48 hours, which is a lie if you ever are in a situation where you want to report someone is missing and they tell you to wait 48 hours. It's a lie. So, regardless, I don't know what happened, but the families did their own search and they were on the lookout for Richard, Richard's truck, which was a black 2001 Dodge Dakota, as I mentioned. It's important. They looked along 
Uh, 
prosecutor's office, with the FBI reporting that an extensive investigation to date has generated some promising leads. However, neither they nor the vehicle have been located. And in March, two, sorry, in March 22nd, 2022, a private search and recovery dive team announced that they were actively working on the case. So, I'm hoping that maybe, I'm not sure if that dive team is still doing their work, but I really hope that eventually some things are turned off because it's just insane that they literally vanished into thin air. Like, they just, there's nothing indicating that this was a voluntary disappearance. So, and Richard was like an amazing guy by all accounts. I know that people can say that. Like people said Ted Bundy was a great guy. You know what I mean? But I mean, what what purpose would Richard have for like kidnapping Danielle? You know, like it's just so, so bizarre. I do think that Joe Imbo, her ex-husband, is a little bit sus just because he had this rage and anger over the fact that she wouldn't take him back. And clearly he's a very spontaneous and sporadic individual because he just decides to divorce his wife over some random chick that he meets on a plane, like that kind of shit. So I don't know. I really don't know what happened, but I truly hope that one day we will find out. And I hope for the sake of their families as well, that more can be uncovered because it's just so, so upsetting and crazy that it happened this quickly. Also, I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I read or heard somewhere that Angela, Richard's daughter, was 